My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. Welcome to Ty Rants. Welcome back to Ty Rants. My name is Ty French and these are my rants. If you're watching on YouTube, then bam, you guys are seeing business in the front, party in the back, berries and cream guy, Hoswego Muchacho, out the door, see you later, never to return again. I gave up. I gave up on the long hair journey. I have really found myself in this new mullet era that has been reactivated from two years ago. If you guys remember, I had a mullet two years ago. I don't feel like I really let that era simmer long enough and I've been trying to grow my hair out. I I it's been a struggle. Anyone who has ever tried to grow their hair out either like women, men, the non binary community, anyone who's ever gone from like really short hair to trying to go to long hair it, it we're stronger than the marines. Like there are so many phases and so many ugly looks that you have to go through. And I was just over it. I was over it. And I was over only ever having like one hairstyle. And don't even get me started about sleeping at night. You guys know I had to basically cultural appropriate and get a do-rag basically <laughs> to sleep with at night. And now I don't have to do that. And I feel so free with this new mullet and having my bangs back. And not always having my forehead exposed, even though I got Botox so the wrinkles are gone. But... um. Yeah, I'm feeling so good. And I will say, I don't know if you tyrants were self-sabotaging me and telling me that my hair looks good when it didn't and I was actually just ugly for the last six months because I went out over the weekend. And when I tell you, I've never felt so objectified in my entire life. I'm not saying I'm some hot kid on the block all of a sudden, but that's how I felt. Now, maybe the people were staring at me because I was ugly or they were making fun of my outfit or ate something in my teeth, but I'll just say, I, I've never gotten so many people staring at me at a gay bar. Like, I was like, is there something on my face? Do I look that good? Like, what is happening? I don't understand. I was, really, I was wearing a really weird outfit, so maybe they were just um, actually mocking me, but yeah, I was feeling objectified in a good way. I was like, ooh, stare at me, daddy. Hi, how are you? Yes, I've got a mullet. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So I'm just in a new era, you know, 28, feeling great. <laughs> That's the last time I'm going to mention my birthday. Um, wow, wow, wow. Anyways, you guys, I am so sorry that today's episode is up a little bit late, but I have a good reason. I have a good excuse. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you saw my Instagram stories yesterday, then you would understand why the episode is up a little late. And that is because I was roller skating. With RuPaul, RuPaul herself, and the queens of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, You guys know I love roller skating, and you know I love drag queens, and you know I love RuPaul. Um, Hello, I'm sorry, I love the tyrants, but even y'all are going to get the back burner when I get an invitation to go on a roller skating rink with Sir RuPaul, okay? Um, so that's what happened yesterday. You guys got the boot. And um, unfortunately, I had to put me first. I had to put me first. And I did. Um, Miss Josefina Cuervo and I went to the Emmy nomination celebration party for the season 16 cast of RuPaul's Drag Race. And as you guys know, I went to the season. I don't even know what season it was. But when Willow Pill won, I was at the season finale when they taped it. And I went with my friend Kalechi. And I had met like a lot of the Paramount and the MTV peeps there. And we've just like stayed in touch on Instagram and stuff. But they invited me last week to come to this. And I was just like, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Like, wow, I'm really living the dream. Because not only now have I seen RuPaul once in my life. And she was in drag and did a full performance in Vegas. Like, that is, that is actually number one on the bucket list and I've checked it off. Thank you. Now I have seen RuPaul out of drag DJing while I'm on a roller skating rink with all the queens on a rooftop during sunset in Los Angeles. 
is there anything better? When I tell you, I was standing two feet away from RuPaul. From RuPaul herself. As she's literally DJing disco music and I'm roller skating around. You guys know I love roller skating. Like, if they could have made an event tailored to me specifically as an individual, it would have been that event. Roller skating, rooftop sunset, drag queens, and RuPaul DJing. And an open bar. And Josefina Cuervo. Oh my God. Like, literally, it was heaven on earth. It was so much fun. Um, I, I, I've never been so sweaty in my life. Because you guys know I get really into the roller skating. And I was just, you know, maybe putting a little too much pussy into it. But it was so fun. It was so fun to meet all the queens. Unfortunately, Nymphia Wind was not there. And neither was Plain Jane. Like, the two best queens of the whole season. But um, I got to meet a lot of the other gals. Um, and, yeah, it was just all around a great night. I was supposed to record the episode earlier in the day. And then, uh, how much do we want to get into this? How much do we want to get into this? Um, ADT security, you're pissing me off. Okay, I got two middle fingers for your ass. So I have been having trouble. I have an ADT system, as you guys know, because um, I'm just a really sought after celebrity. And once upon a time in the early days of COVID, um, four people with wigs and bandanas covering their faces tried to break into my apartment in the middle of the night. If you guys, if this is news to you guys, then you guys really aren't attached to my lore and you don't know the deep lore. Um, and there is an episode of what we said, I don't even know, literally probably four years ago, in which I explain it. It's probably the funniest 10 minutes that I've ever performed in my entire life. Um, anyways, no, they were not drag queens. I don't know why they were wearing wigs or the bandanas. I think that was to, you know, disguise themselves. Um, if they were drag queens, I would open the door myself and said, come on in. But anyways, ever since then, I've had a... ADT security system. I ended up doing like a partnership with them, whatever. And then when the partnership ended, I just extended it because I liked having a security system so much. Like I have cameras in my apartment. I can open and lock my door from an app. So if I like go out of town, I can let someone into my house like a friend to water my plants and like get my packages and whatever. Um, so all around, I've liked it until... My cameras haven't been working lately and like lately as in like the last six months. And I just like, I don't know how to troubleshoot it. I don't know how to reconnect them, at whatever. And so now I live like, you know, in a, in a spot that no one can really access. And I am not on the first floor. I have a door code. Like I have like a, you know, so it's, it, I, I felt a little bit safer, but I, I still wanted it to work. Obviously, I'm paying for it monthly. So anyways, I call ADT and they're like, okay, to get a guy to come out, it's going to be $49 or whatever. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll pay $49. I'll get all my system running back up again. Oh, because I forgot this part. I was fine with the cameras not working because like my whole system still worked. I, like, I can still like lock it. I can still have an alarm, whatever. Suddenly, all the batteries like went low. Like the panel, my fire alarm my door sensor, everything. And now when I have my system armed in the middle of the night, I woke up the other day, it beeps every five minutes because it's warning me that the battery's low. Um, I don't care if the battery's low. I'm trying to sleep. I'm trying to snooze down USA. Can you let me know that it's low tomorrow? Can you just send me an email? Can you send me a notification? Why do you got to beep? Every five minutes. Because now I have to turn my alarm off. And now suddenly I'm feeling very vulnerable as I'm trying to snooze down USA. So anyways, I'm like, whatever. $49, come out. Replace all my batteries. I'll finally get my cameras connected back again. Everything's going to be working. I'm going to sleep blissfully. And whatever. So of course, whenever you have like a, a customer service agent come out, they give you like literally a seven hour window. And I just assumed that they were going to be coming at the earlier part and they didn't, they gave it the later part. And then by the time that he had come, I had to get ready and go to the event. And so I didn't, I wasn't able to record when I was supposed to. And it actually ended up working perfectly because then I'm able to tell you guys about the event and whatever. That's why the episode is late. But <laughs> he, the ADT guy has the nerve to come 
And I say nerve loosely because here's the thing. He was the sweetest gentleman I've ever seen in my life. And he, he, he ended up doing me a solid, but he comes out, he starts like doing all this stuff, changing all the batteries. And he's like, Oh, just so you know, to reconnect the cameras, it's going to be $400. I'm so sorry. What do you mean? Cause I'm paying monthly for the cameras and they haven't worked in six months. And also, um, on the phone, they told me it was just going to be $49 for you to come in and ba- like, what? You just have to unplug and plug it back in. Like what? I, I don't understand. He like tried to explain to me why, cause it's this and it's going to take two hours and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. When they came and installed the cameras, it didn't even take two hours. So why just rebooting? He explains to me this rigging around, whatever. And then I was like, well, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, that's literally a car payment and I don't care. Just get all my batteries working and get the fuck out of my apartment. So then, I mean, I obviously didn't say it like that, but I think you could tell that I was definitely frustrated because I was like, wait, what? Like, I just wasted my whole day waiting around for you to come thinking that everything was going to work and then whatever. Um, Then he's like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to tell my boss that your cameras are broken and that we have to replace them. And then I'll come back out next week and we'll give you two new ones free of charge. Now, what are we talking about? Now, what are we talking about? So this is where capitalism has failed us because tell me why in the hell I have two working cameras. And in order for you to just connect them to my system that I already have, and you're already here in my home. In order for you to do that, it's going to cost me $400. However, you can leave, go back to your warehouse, get me two brand new cameras, come back on a different day, reinstall them, and that is free 99. Now, I don't know who is the CEO of ADT security system, but I'm going to need you to figure it out. Because what are we talking about? That does not make any sense. That it does not, you're already here. Just recalibrate the cameras. You're gonna bring me two new cameras and it's gonna be free? I mean, thanks for doing me a solid, I guess. He was like trying to do me a favor, but like that just, that, uh, no, 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 no. And it, that, my whole weekend and my whole week this week has just been filled with customer service people that are really pissing me off. And a huge part of that is like health insurance. And I don't even know how much I want to get into that because like you guys don't need to know my medical history. But yeah, I'm not going to get into that. But just no, I'm freaking pissed. I'm pissed at the, the way that everything works these days is so messed up. And like I'll have insurance and then I'll go to urgent care to get this. Okay, I just have to I just have to share this. I went to urgent care to get a medication that I've been on for years and I recently switched insurances. So I wasn't able to get into my regular doctor for like six months. I think I already talked about this, but long story short, I went to get on this medication, which I've already done this. I have to go every month to do it. And I wait in that, not in the waiting room. I already get into the room, into the urgent care room. They like take my vitals. They take my blood pressure, everything. I am sitting in there for one hour. One whole hour after waiting in the waiting room, after signing in. So I've been at this place for two hours. And the nurse comes in and is like, oh, the doctor's not going to see you. Excuse me? The doctor never even came in, asked me one question. I never saw the doctor. I was just like, yeah, she's not going to give you that medication. Um, Okay. I didn't know that a doctor could just like choose to not even come see me and or give me the medication that I need and... Isn't that, well, I already paid to be here and my insurance, what am I paying health insurance for? If I can't even go to an urgent care and get a medication that I'm on, I don't know. I, I didn't really want to start this episode, this episode off like that. This episode was supposed to be happy and blissful. RuPaul's Drag Race, woo! But yeah, if I start talking about health insurance or ADT too long, then, then we might be here all goddamn day. I might be a little cranky because I'm a little extra tired this week um, because I was a little extra feral this weekend. I won't lie. I think I was just riding off of a high off of my amazing time in Idaho. Um, And I really wanted to bring that, that joy and love 
to to Los Angeles. And let me tell you, I don't know what's happened in the mountains of Idaho, but I didn't bring it back with me. <laughs> I was feral in Idaho. I had so much fun. I felt great. I was feral this weekend. I feel like a big pile of dog shit. Something about LA, it hits different. It hits different and I'm feeling it this week. I'm so exhausted. I'm back to having nightmares all the time. I need to really like ask, I would ask urgent care if the doctor would ever come fucking see me, but I need to ask my doctor like, is it normal for someone to just have nightmares every single night? Like uh, I have nightmares all the time. And you know you've hit a real big low when your nightmares are very, very vividly you being at the McDonald's at LAX airport and then still only serving breakfast and you only want two hamburgers. And they won't give you hamburgers because they're still serving breakfast and you're going to miss your flight. Now, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? That is not a normal nightmare. And I'm ashamed to say that those are my nightmares. <laughs> my nightmares are not getting kidnapped. They're not someone chasing me. They're not someone breaking into my house. They are me showing up to McDonald's and they are still only serving breakfast. In the arms of an angel, fly away. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> like that is not okay. Oh my gosh. This weekend also, this host of Vina Cuervo and I went to a football game. Sports, 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 sports. I'm just in my sports era, okay? I'm a basketball NBA star. And this weekend, I went to my first football game. I went at SoFi Stadium, where I saw Beyonce, of course. Um, and I was back in a suite, which was, you know, triggering because we know last time I blacked out and I fell down the stairs. But we went with um, the brand that Jose works for is called Baxter of California. And I've talked about them before. They were like a sponsor of one of my Coachella um, reels. But they're just like a really amazing men's grooming brand. And they have like a barbershop here in LA. If any of your boys need to go get haircuts or get some products, go check them out. But um, they are the new sponsor for the LA Rams this year, which is LA's one of LA's football teams. And so LA Rams were playing Dallas Cowboys in like a... I don't understand what it was because it's like a it's like a preseason game. It's like a made up game. They're like practicing, but it like doesn't have anything to do with like them going to the Super Bowl or anything. So it was like, you know what? Low stakes. That's my kind of game. I want to go. I want to cheer on a team. I want to have no horse in the race. And I don't want it to have to like, you know, have so much pressure on whether or not it's going to help them get to the Super Bowl or something. You know, so it was fun. And we went with just like a big group of boys. Um, and... <sighs> I was feral. I was feral the night before. I won't lie. And um, so I was a little hungover. I was a little hungover already going into this day. And it was going to be a long day. I went to an after party the night before. And like, you know, it started to get really late. And I wanted to leave. All my friends were like, no, 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 you got to stay. I was like, I got to put me first. And I got to put Jose first. Like, I got to leave. So I got home at like 3.30 in the morning. Which like, you know, that's that's bad. That's bad. I had to be up at the barbershop at like... 11 to get on a party bus to then go back to SoFi Stadium. I lived semi near SoFi Stadium, but then I had to drive 40 minutes to get to the barbershop to then go back. It was just like, it, it was going to be a long morning. So anyways, um, I get up, I'm a little hungover. I make it to the barbershop. All is good. We're having mimosas. We're having breakfast. And then we hop on a party bus to make our way to SoFi Stadium. Little did I know that this would turn into the party bus from hell. And you guys know I love party bus. I'm actually saying party bus. It wasn't really a party bus. It was just like a big, nice bus, like a, like a tour bus. I, not like a, I don't know, like a school bus. Like it was like not a party bus. There weren't poles. Anyways, um, we end up only like 15 minutes away from SoFi Stadium. It should have been like a 45 minute drive. We are in standstill traffic for literally one whole hour, we have not moved. The bus has not moved. They've closed the road. The entire road was closed. There was an eight car pile up about 100 feet in front of us. And literally, like, I mean, obviously, 
hope everyone's okay. But there was literally a thousand ambulances, a thousand fire trucks. Like we were not moving anytime soon. There were all these cars. They had to get tow trucks. We were stuck. And after about 45 minutes, I was like, mm, I'm going to need to pee. I drank way too much Pedialyte this morning so that I wasn't going to be hungover. I got to get off this bus. I thought I was only running on this bus for like 30 minutes. So then I go, I pee in a bush. As I'm peeing in a bush, everybody else on the bus comes out. And literally, I'm talking penis in hand. I'm behind a bush peeing. And they're all like, oh, um, we actually have to pee too. That's my mom's house if you want to just go in there. You're telling me I've been on this bus for an hour and you're just now letting me know that your mother's house is right there. And you're telling me I'm already peeing in a bush. It's too late. I don't know how girls work, but if you have a penai, like once the flow gets going, like there's no like clamping and walking back to a house. It's not going to work. Leave me alone. Look away. Anyway, so they all went and used a normal restroom. I was just on a freeway, which with hundreds of cars watching me pee in a bush. Um, anyways, and then after about another 25 minutes, we were like, we got to just like walk and try and get an Uber or something. Like we're going to miss the entire game. We had already missed the whole first quarter of the game. And I felt so bad for Jose because obviously he's putting this on with his brand. Like he invited everyone. He worked so hard on it, but yeah, the vibes were low. We ended up walking into this neighborhood, like getting a car. We made it by like the, I think it was like the second quarter had just started and once we were there, let me tell you, the vibes went from zero to 100 real quick. It was seriously so much fun. One of the best Sundays I've had in so long. Like, it was just, like, I, I get it. I get why sports are fun. I understand it, and I'm tuning in. Will I ever be the person that, like, understands every single rule and every single flag? Absolutely not. However, I know my way around, I know him. I know my way around a football Court? Football field. I know my way around a football field because I was a wide receiver in the eighth grade, okay, for the Lone Week Knights. Um, but we were losing against the Dallas Cowboys, and, you know, that didn't feel great. That didn't feel great. We're with, like, the Rams. Baxter sponsors them, so it didn't feel great. You know, we're all in a sweep. When I tell you, with four seconds on the clock— the Rams snuck in, did a touchdown, did a kick, and won. Oh, my God. The amount of adrenaline and serotonin that was pushed into my veins in that moment was undeniable. And it was amazing. And I understand it. I understand the rust. And I understand, like, maybe if I would have lost, like, I maybe could understand getting in a fist fight in the parking lot if a smug little Cowboys fan would walk out and start saying some shit to me. I could understand that happening, okay? So just, if you see me at a game and you're rooting for the other side, hi to kids. Oh my God, and there was a 4.7 magnitude earthquake in LA over the weekend. I was, I was hungover in bed, regretting my life's decisions. Um, all of a sudden, a little shake, 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 senora. <laughs> Literally, in my apartment, I have all my wine glasses and everything just on top of my kitchen cabinets. And I heard them starting to riddle rattle, just chitter chatter, shimmer shiny. <laughs> and um, this disco ball started to shake. My lamps were shaking. I was like, oh no, I'm so hungover. I'm in my underwear. There's a McDonald's bag next to my head. And this is how I'm going to go out. This is how the big one's going to get me. And if you've never been in an earthquake, then you maybe don't know, but like, when it lasts for just one second too long, you you really get worried. There's phases of when you feel an earthquake. You're like, denial, is this an earthquake? Acceptance, oh yeah, this isn't just like a big truck outside of my apartment. This is this is an earthquake. And then once it goes on for one second too long, absolute panic that this is the big one. Um, and then after panic, it's decision time. Do I get under an arch, under a bed? Do I put clothes on? Like, do I run outside? What do I do? And then by the time that my slow ass brain cells that were very, very few and hard to find at that point after a feral weekend 
Um, by the time I had realized that I probably should put clothes on in case this is the big one, then it was over. Um, I'm ashamed at, at my speed, <laughs> which I decided to not tuck and cover because if it was the big one, I wouldn't be here to record this podcast episode because I would be, I would be gone. I'd be gone and I'd probably deserve it because I, I moved at a very slow pace. But there is a very weird like feeling after that happens because earthquakes, it's like you never know if there's going to be an aftershock, there's going to be this, or it's like, was that just the beginning? You never know. And California, they say we're up for a big one. So I didn't do anything about it. I didn't like go to, <laughs> I literally, I stayed in bed. I continued to eat about Mickey D's and I didn't put clothes on. Um, so once again, if an aftershock had come and my literal 200 year old building would have collapsed on me, that would have been my fault. And if you would have read in the headlines, super huge, famous, amazing, beautiful podcast star, host of Ty Rants, Ty French found in rubble, crushed, naked, hamburger in hand. <laughs> intoxication levels from night before at an all-time high. If you would have read that in the paper, I would just need you to ignore it, okay? Also, over the weekend, I didn't even know I wanted to bring this up, but it's just absolutely so absurd, and I just have to have it in um, on the record in case it ever becomes true, which I doubt it will, but, like, I was given permission that I could share this information on the podcast, and I can't, I'm not going to share how I found out this information, but I did hear this information from a pretty reliable source, not me being like the new Dumois or the new like Perez Hilton. I was told over the weekend that Jennifer Aniston, we all know and love, Rachel from Friends, um, someone was like, wait, do you know who she's rumored to be dating? And I was like, no, I have no idea who, I don't know, like Tom Cruise again. I mean, not Tom Cruise, um, Brad Pitt again. Like, are they back together? Like, I have no idea. Gun to my head, I... This person could have given me a hundred guesses, gun to my head, and I would not have guessed the person. Guess the word on the street Jennifer Aniston is dating. Obama! <laughs> what? Literally, what? And I only share that here, A, because it came from a pretty reliable source who told me I could share it. And three, it's almost, so, it's so absurd that I feel like I can say it because it's probably not true, but it's also so absurd that who would make that up at all? So then that makes me think it's true. It, I don't think it's true because it's so absurd, but then I think it's true because it's so absurd that it's like, well, where did you get that information? Apparently him and Michelle have like a, an understanding. It's not like she, he's cheating. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So if you, if you see some rumblings, or if you see, you know, Jennifer Aniston at some political events, you know, you heard it on Tyrants first. And this might be the breakthrough of Tyrants. This might bring Tyrants to the main media. This might bring us to the forward culture. Or this might make it so the Secret Service is after me and guns me down and secretly murders me and hides my body. So once again, on the record... <laughs> If that happens, the tyrants know what really happened to me. If I go missing, it was Obama and Jennifer Aniston who did it to me. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot to talk about this last week. It was on my list of things to talk about. And so many of you guys DM'd me and you were like, um, please talk about this. But yeah, yeah, I casually shot a cover for Harper's Bazaar Vietnam. Um, yeah, that's right. I did that. I did that shit. And I'm proud. And not only am I proud of that, my best fucking friend, mother now of two beautiful children, pregnant 10 months. Bam! Harper's Bazaar cover star. Mama, mama, mama. She's an icon. She's a legend. Tessa Barton, what can't you do? And who looks like that 10 months pregnant? I'll never understand it, but I'm just... I'm just honored and I'm proud to be part of the ride. I'm honored and proud to be part of that team. We crushed it. Um, all of the photos I wanted to share were edited in the Tezza app. Let me repeat that. All the images that we shot, and if you haven't seen them, go to Tezza's feed. 
literally they're the most beautiful photos I've ever had a part in. Like they are so stunning and they were all edited in the Tezza app. The Tezza app is just so major and I'm so proud of her. You guys got to go read the whole spread. There's like a link in her bio. I'm pretty sure. But those photos were just so amazing and so iconic. And it really made me like miss doing just like epic shoots like that for photography. And so I'm definitely going to be trying to get more into that. I feel like I've been talking about that a lot lately, but I got to just make it happen. But yeah, yeah, I shot a cover for Harper's Bazaar Vietnam. We got to talk about some of our pop girlies lately. Um, Katy Perry's new song finally came out, Lifetimes. And just why the heck was that not the first song? I don't understand. I mean, here's the thing. We got to be, we got to be for real. It's not groundbreaking. It's not amazing. It's not, I mean, no, it is amazing. It's not groundbreaking. She didn't like reinvent a wheel. She created a cute song. Love it. I know you're feeling it. Don't, don't believe it. I'm going to love it to the end and then repeat it. I don't know the words yet, um, but I love it. It's fun. You know, she's not reinventing the wheel. It's cute. It's amazing. It's pop. It's fun. She came out with a music video. In Ibiza, you know, summertime feels. Love it. Now, the freaking government in Ibiza is putting her under investigation for environmental impact because they didn't get the right permits to film the music video there. Katie. Katie! How am I supposed to defend your ass? Because this song was supposed to like put all the bad press to shame from Women's World and the whole Dr. Luke of it all. And then now we're out here ruining the environment in Ibiza. And I'm going to say Ibiza, not Ibiza. Because guess what? I'm American. Red, white, and blue. That's how I bleed, okay? I'm not going to pronounce it like that the same way. We talked about this. I'm never going to say cross, huh? Because I'm an American white boy. It's croissant. I'm going to say it how it phonetically is spelled in English. And I am not a try-hard little bitch who's going to say, oh my God, yeah, the Ibiza government is going to... It's Ibiza. There's a Z. And I might be wrong for that. Maybe I am supposed to be pronouncing it how the locals would pronounce it. But, you know, I think if someone from a different country were to come and is saying, you know, like, Alabama. <laughs> and they're speaking French. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, yes, I would like to go to Alabama. That wouldn't happen. You don't say it in the accent in the way that people say it in which the place is and where they live or where they're, what you're saying. You say it wherever you're from. I would say, hi, I would like to go to Alabama. Someone from France would say, hello, I would like to go to Alabama. In Alabama. Howdy there, I'm from Alabama. <laughs> That's probably a terrible example and also probably very offensive. And I'm sorry to the people of Alabama because one, I've never been. I actually don't know where it is. And <laughs> I don't think that they speak like that. But you know what? Some examples don't have to be nail on the head, okay? You understand what I'm saying. I'm going to say, hi, I would like a croissant. If you speak French and you're from France, you could say croissant. If you're from Alabama, you might say, can I get a croissant? Because <laughs> apparently all people from Alabama are literally mater from Lightning McQueen. From Cars. That's actually the movie's name. What was I even saying? How did we get here? Oh, Katy, Katy Perry. And th th there's an event that Katy Perry is going to be at in two weeks in WeHo. And I'm going. I bought a ticket. And I can't wait. And I just want everyone to know that, yes, I am a fake-ass bitch. I've told you guys from the start that Katy Perry, like, is my pop girl. I love her. I've loved her from the day I was born. And I'll love her till the day I die. I can critique. You're allowed to critique your favorite people and your favorite pop stars and still love them. I'm allowed to say that woman's world was a flop. I'm allowed to say she shouldn't be working with Dr. Luke. I'm allowed to say, why are you ruining the beaches in Ibiza? 
and still go love her and support her and wish her well. That's that's just how I I feel. And you don't I'm not asking you to go support her. Actually, I hope you don't support her because then the tip kits are cheaper for me and easier to get. But I'm still bopping a lifetimes. I know you feel it. Can you believe it? I'm gonna love you to the end and then repeat it. Ooh, ooh. See, that's what I want. I just want bubblegum pop. Now, I wish that she would be a little bit more innovative in the way that she does it, but I think she's just so commercial that like she kind of has to be like the Macy's of pop girls. But when you compare it to like, I mean, Brat, I'm still in my Brat era. There is a remix going around that I posted in the broadcast channel of Ty Rams on my page. Yeah, I'm going to start sharing music now there too. So if you're not a member, you better go join it. Um, there is this remix that is um, Charlie XCX 360. But the instrument is Fleetwood Mac. It's changing my literal brain chemistry. Oh, I don't want to get like demonetized. Oh my god, it's literally the best thing ever. If you want the link, it's in the broadcast channel. Um, but like that, Brat is reinventing pop music. And then you got Miss Addie Ray over here. Slaying the house down boots with Diet Pepsi. The music video, pop excellence. You're not reinventing a wheel. You're speaking about Pepsi, blue jeans, and losing your virginity in the backseat of a car. That's all I want. You don't got to make it anything more than that. I want it to be cheap pop. Katie's kind of doing that, but like, at least Diet Pepsi, the production and the sound, it's not like necessarily reinventing a wheel, but it is, it does like still feel new and fresh at the same time, you know? And Addison Ray just like is that girl. I'm obsessed. I love, I was hoping that, because when she announced the single, I was hoping it was going to be the one that's like been floating around on TikTok of her like walking underwater with those high heels. And it's like, give me more. That's what I was hoping it was going to be. Hopefully that's coming soon because I can't get that little like snippet out of my head. But Diet Pepsi, love it. Smash. And I saw someone do a take the other day. Oh, wait, maybe it was in my DMs. Maybe it was one of you little tyrants that had said that everyone is saying Addison Rae should play Britney Spears, but they don't think she's talented enough. And to that, I just say, give her a chance. Give her a chance. Because I've been seeing a lot of other people thrown out for the Britney Spears movie, like Sabrina Carpenter, Emma Roberts, below me. No, you can keep that movie. Sabrina Carpenter, she doesn't have that, like, innocence in a way like that like like she just is like too much of a pop star like Addison Rae has this like sweetness to her like I don't know how to describe it like just like a softer gal I don't, I don't know like it's the southernness it's the Louisiana roots I don't know so who else was up for it? There was this other girl that I saw that people were wanting to. I don't know. Anyways, Addison Rae's new song. I'm literally obsessed. The visuals, everything. Guess what she got from me over the weekend? And this, I don't really follow a lot of celebrities. But when I'm finally obsessed with someone, this is how you know. Guess what I did? Instagram. Follow. Followed. That's how you know you really get the sample of approval. And guess what? Katy Perry doesn't even have the follow. Guess what? Rihanna. You already know I unfollowed that bitch. I, I follow my celebrities. I unfollow and follow my celebrities whenever I want because if you're not giving me what I want and it's giving me like Rihanna, I love her so much. She was giving me way too much Fenty ad promotion. Unfollow. See you later. If you're not going to give me music or you're not going to give me what I want, see you later. Hustle with Muchacho. But then it, that's not forever. Once you start coming around or even like now lately, she's been posting more fashion shoots. So I actually did think I refollowed her again. Then I'll follow again. Beyonce, you're pushing it with the sacred shit. Okay. Give me more content. Give me more content. Give me what I need. It has to be a healthy balance. If it feels like I'm following a celebrity and it's only to rep their brand, like Selena Gomez, Rare Beauty, blah, 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 blah. I'm out. I'm out. I still want the allure. I want I want the celebrity-ness. I don't want to just be feeling like I'm following a CEO of a brand, you know? Kim Kardashian. I think she does a healthy mix. She does a healthy mix. Okay, I've got two more things that I want to talk about before I let you guys go on this gorgeous Wednesday. Yay! First being, Rachel Gunn, <laughs> also known by her breakdancing name, Ray Gunn, 
the Australian break dancer at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Now, <laughs> when I first saw the clip of her performance, after learning that she has a PhD in break dancing and cultural movements, I wanted her arrested. I was not going to rest until she was behind bars. That's how passionately I felt. I felt disrespected. I felt horrified. I felt embarrassed for the continent of Australia. Is Australia a continent or a country? Or is it both? Now, sitting on the clips and the footage of Miss Ray Gunn's breakdancing performance, I think it's the best thing that happened in the Olympics the whole two weeks. I think she's an icon. She's a legend. She didn't score one point. Zero. Zeros across the boards. And to me, that is almost more iconic than getting like a mid score or like getting a bronze. Like, guess what? I ain't speaking about the other people. I don't know about the other people. I don't even know who won gold, but I know who lost and I know who's going to be remembered forever and I know who's going to be memed forever and I know who is now an internet legend, Ray Gunn from Australia. She's a 36-year-old university lecturer from Sydney and literally has a PhD in breakdancing and goes to the Olympics with that performance that is legendary. It is iconic. And if I was a brand, I would want to sponsor her. I wouldn't want to sponsor the gold winner. I would want to sponsor this absolute kangaroo who can't dance. And who's, who's to decide what break dancing is? Who, how do you score that? It's like, it's all interpretive. It's art, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like the guy who lost the pole vaulting medal because his giant big fat penis didn't make it over the pole and caused it to knock over. And the entire world watching the Olympics saw his schlong go rawr, 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 bouncing off a pole. I mean, I, as a homosexual man, have to say thank you because I quite enjoyed the view. However, I'm sure that didn't feel great at the time. However, once again, couldn't tell you one other thing that happened during the pole vaulting of this year's Olympics. But I can tell you about the French man whose giant schlong didn't make it across the pole. Once again, if I'm a brand, hired. Underwear brand, skims, get on it. Get on it with the bulge. It's just like that. that's the culture that we're at these days. You don't have to be the best at something. You just have to be the most remembered. And these legends are going to go down in history. And I love them. I love you, Rachel Gunn. Or Ray, is that it? Yeah, Rachel Gunn, Ray Gunn. You're an icon. And that just goes to show how flip, flip, flopping ass bitch I can be. Because when I first saw the clip, I wanted her arrested. I wanted her behind bars. I wanted her to go to jail. I wanted her to be punished to the fullest extent of the law for embarrassing her country like that. And I'm not even Australian. But you know what? It goes to show, with a little bit of patience and time and grace, we can all find unity <laughs> in dance. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to talk about today is something that a lot of you guys wanted me to touch on, and it is the Brooke Schofield drama. If you guys don't know who Brooke Schofield is, Brooke Schofield has a podcast with Tana Mojo called The Canceled Podcast, and I do listen. I feel like I've talked about it on here a few times. Um... And she is kind of going viral right now for she's kind of getting canceled because a lot of her old tweets went viral. Someone like found some old tweets that were like incredibly racist, incredibly problematic and honestly disgusting. And I don't I didn't really want to talk about it because like I mean, like I'm a white guy and I who what what. It's not my opinion to say whether or not she should be forgiven or not. But, like, 
in my brain, I just think like cancel culture it is around for a reason, obviously. And like, there are a lot of people that should be canceled. However, I think we take it really too far at a lot of points in time, especially because if someone, and guess what? You don't ever have to forgive someone for like, if, if, if you're offended by something that someone says, like you have your right to feel that way about that person forever. But I don't think that like stripping away someone's entire livelihood and job and like telling them to like off themselves or anything like is also appropriate. I think that there has to be room for growth and change. And the Brooke that tweeted those things, like we can clearly see today. And if you know her and you listen to her podcast and whatever, like, you know that that's not who she is. And she's obviously been, been like, she didn't handle the whole situation well at all, but she's been like apologetic and she tried to explain like she grew up in like a very different like household. She grew up in a trailer park, like with her grandparents because her moms were a drug addict, blah, 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 blah. And so if you can't, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it. But like if someone does something absolutely incredibly wrong from 10 years ago and it gets brought up and then you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like that's not who I am today. If that person isn't given a chance of redemption, then what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Every mistake that anyone ever makes, like, we're not going to be able to, like, grow and change from that. And I understand, once again, like, that, it's not my place to, like, give that opinion because I can't imagine how it would feel being, like, a person of color and reading those tweets. Um, and so I, I understand everyone's frustration, obviously. I just think, like, <sighs> the way that people switch up on people so fast is crazy because people obviously fell in love with her because they really loved her and they understood her heart and they felt like they knew her a lot. And obviously it's crazy to look back and see these tweets that she had said, you know, a some odd years ago and be like, wait, what? That's not the book that I knew. But that's why you shouldn't be canceling the book that you know, because that's not the book that you know, because like she has changed and she has grown. And, Obviously, there's a lot of things that she's going to need to do to, like, gain back, you know, the trust of some of her fan base. And some people are never going to come back. And some people shouldn't come back. Like, yeah, there, there are consequences to things like that. But, for instance, and this is, like, so much, sm I mean, I guess maybe not smaller. But, like, to put it into perspective, like, my own life, like, I remember vividly in high school, me and Billy literally would get in arguments. I think when, like, maybe Obama was running or something. And... We were getting in an argument about like gay marriage and I was still very much in the closet, very much Mormon and literally in the ninth grade. Like I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I didn't know anything about politics. The only thing I knew was that like gay marriage is bad and it would affect the Mormon church, blah, blah, blah. And so we would get in arguments about it and I'd be like, oh, like I don't believe in gay marriage. Like I don't think that that should be a thing. And like Obama wants that. And Billy was like, I mean, in her head, she was probably like, um, hello, faggot. Like <laughs> he let's the closet is glass okay but we would kind of go at it and i can i mean like if i i didn't ever like tweet that or like whatever but i can imagine if at that time if i had would have ever like put that in writing or said anything about that and then that's going to come bite me in the ass now 10 years later it's like clearly i don't feel that way now like clearly i was troubled going through something like brainwashed in a religion, in a family, in an environment that was just telling me things. And like when you're young, like that's just what you believe. And I understand there's a huge difference of those scenarios. And I'm not comparing, you know, I'm comparing to apples and oranges. And like, obviously I was 12. And when Brooke Schofield, some of these tweets, she was like 18 or 19, I think. So there's a big, big difference. But I just think that like I look back at that version of myself and I just feel sorry for that kid who was brainwashed and obviously now I'm gay and like ho I'm hopefully going to get married one day and I just feel like so bad that I ever even was like arguing my best friend on that and so I'm sure that Brooke looks back and even though it's like more recent and it's way worse I I'm sure she's like oh my God, like, who is that person? Like, I don't even recognize that person. That's not who I am. 
she was just in a very different scenario. That's what I'm imagining. That's, it, I don't know. It's, it's a really touchy spot. I just think that definitely hold people accountable and put her feet to the flame, but people need to have the right to have forgiveness and grace and a redemption and to apologize. If we don't ever allow people to grow and change and apologize for things that the things that they for the things that they have said, we're not going to go anywhere as a country. Like we are going to stay in 1950. There's going to be people that do things wrong. And if we just push them away and don't give them the room to forgive or grow, then no one's going to ever even attempt to grow or change because they're going to be so scared that they're going to get canceled anyway that they're just going to be like, well, you know what I mean? It's only it's almost going to make people more hateful and more resentful. And I feel like that's kind of what's happened with like the MAGA cult of it all. Like, I think they grew up in a way that is so different than you know, progressive people now and in most people that are like accepting gay people and queer people and people of color and whatever, that they're so scared to grow and change because it's so different. And they're like the, the divide is so vast right now between the two that it's almost like, how do you even, how would someone from MAGA even attempt to come on the other side and then say they do come on the other side and they, you know, like Brooke Schofield are now you know, not Trump supporters and not racist and whatever. And then something that they said when they were a part of that community now is being used against them. How is that fair? Like uh, they should be held accountable, but if they once felt one way and then now don't feel another way, but you're canceling them now for this person for the way that they felt then, why would anyone ever even try and change their mind? It, I don't know. I feel like I'm saying that really wrong. And once again, I'm a white dude from Utah. Like, it's not my place to say. The tweets were incredibly offensive. It was pretty recent. I think one of them was as recent as like 2019. So I understand. I understand the backlash of it all. It's going to be, you know, interesting to see how she plays this all out. And I know Tana did an episode on their podcast and kind of like condemned Brooke and like it's unaware or it's not clear like when Brooke's going to come back to the podcast they're going to go on tour or whatever so it's going to be interesting to see how this all, all unfolds I really wish that Brooke would have just like addressed it head on come out with the podcast episode immediately explained everything apologized said what she's going to do to grow and change um so we'll see I guess I'll update you guys once once that once she actually breaks her silence but I I just fear I feel like I'm going in circles, but I fear cancel culture so much because of the fact that if we don't, if we set a precedent and an example that there's no room for growth, there's no room for change, whatever you said in your past, we're going to use that against you. If that is the precedent, then I fear people will never have the, uh, want to change they'll never want to change they'll never want to grow because they're going to be so scared that like whatever their past was is their present and it's going to affect their present so why would you ever run away from your past I, i'm saying that's so wrong i don't know it's just a, it's a touchy subject it's weird and i think it's even if i say something wrong or we say some things wrong or whatever i just think it's healthy to have the discussion because the more we push it to the back burner and don't talk about it. That's how we end up in these scenarios. And like people need to learn from others mistakes. Okay. I'm talking in circles. Anyways, I keep forgetting to take y'all to the salon. I keep forgetting to do French tips. As you guys are aware, I've been, you know, still figuring out the new flow of the new um, episodes, just doing one a month. I mean, one, one a uh, week. God, I can't talk right now. Um, But I have a submission today, a tyrant in the salon that I'm good. And I'm gagged. And I don't know if you guys are going to agree with me or disagree with me, but I don't think this tyrant is going to like what I have to say. Okay. So the, this tyrant at the salon says, dearest Ty, I'm a 29 year old married stay at home mom of a sweet little toddler on Instagram. I recently followed a very, very hot guy. I used to hook up with about nine years ago when I was 20 and he was 25. 
He followed me back and seeing his pictures has drummed up some old feelings and also has me wondering about why he stopped wanting to hang out with me. At the time, I was told it was because we were going too far with our makeouts and that every time he was around me, he wanted to bite all of my clothes off with his teeth. Hot, but not ideal for, at the time, two Mormons worried about having sex. But I know both of us would feel differently about that now, and I guess I want some validation that he wishes he would have or still could hook up with me. I blocked all my followers from seeing my Instagram story except for him and posted a hot swimsuit pic in hopes that he would text me and maybe we could talk some things out. Unfortunately, all he did was view the story and DM'd me, yowza, like he was a character from the Flintstones or something, and I did not get a text. I am married and I'm not wanting to start some sort of affair or anything, but the idea of getting closure from him and getting to talk out our memories of what happened has been constantly gnawing at me. And knowing if he's still attracted to me feels like it would be a huge ego boost and just what I need. My husband is in his second year of medical school and is crazy busy. And the past couple of months, I often feel like a single mom. Also, entering this last year of my 20s has me feeling some type of way, like I'm having a quarter-life crisis. I feel like I'm at such a pivotal life point of still being young and hot, and if I'm ever going to get to talk to this guy again, now would be the time. I'm wondering if I keep posting secret thirst traps in hopes this guy finally reaches out to me, or if I should just text him first to try and resolve these unsolved feelings. Or do I not risk blowing up my life and just leave it all be and try to forget about him? I can't lie, the yowza response aches me out of it. Love you in the pod. Tyrants forever. XOXO. Girl! BFFR! What are you talking about? Tyrant, 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 tyrant. I am going to give you some tough love right here, right now. If you don't leave this man alone, if you don't block this man immediately, I'm going to be very upset at you. If you reach out to this man, if you keep posting thirst traps, I'm so sorry. Do not blow up your life like this. I understand being a mother of a toddler, especially while your husband is in medical school, is probably very taxing. You probably don't get a lot of attention. You feel like a single parent. Your husband's in medical school, whatever. Your husband is out there in medical school, trying to build a future for your family, and you are out here on Instagram posting thirst traps for a guy that you used to hook up with nine years ago, wanting him to text you. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're like, oh, I don't want to start an affair. I don't care. I don't care. That's how it all starts. That's how it all starts. Why do you care if he regrets that you guys stopped hooking up or not? Like, you, th this is so messy and so inappropriate. How would you feel if your husband was secretly posting thirst traps for a girl that he used to hook up with 10 years ago? Probably not very great. You probably wouldn't feel very great. You'd probably be like, cool, I'm here raising your kid while you're at medical school and you're out here DMing girls you used to hook up with. That's not okay. So why is it any different for you, even though, you know, you feel like a single mom, you're probably not getting a lot of attention. Your husband's out there hustling his ass off in medical school to try and provide for your family for the future and for the future of your child. And you're out here DMing a guy that you used to hook up with 10 years ago, trying to get him to text you. No, why are you baiting him? Why do you want him to text you? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All this energy that you're doing and posting thirst traps for this guy, send those thirst traps to your husband. Okay, trying to get him more excited, trying to put that energy into getting the spark back in your relationship and maybe helping, you know, feed that fire. Don't feed this fire. You need to literally, I'm not kidding, block this man from Instagram, hasta luego. Do not talk to him. Do not DM him. Do not follow him. I cannot feel more firm on this, that that is so inappropriate. And if I found out that my partner, my the spouse was doing this to me, like that to me is almost like, especially if you text, like, or if you continue DMing, like that is a form of cheating to me. Like that is an emotional affair that is so inappropriate. And I need you to please block this person. Do not blow up your life. It is not worth it. Please get out while you can. Tyron, I'm sorry if that is not what you wanted to hear, but that is how I feel. And I, I love you. You're a tyrant, tyrant strong, but I really, really think you're in the wrong here. I really do. 
anyways, thanks for coming to the salon. Um, Tyrants, I love you so much. So sorry again that the episode was late. Sorry this episode was kind of all over the place. We had a lot to catch up on, a lot of live updates. Um, but I love you guys. Make sure you follow me at Tyrants Pod on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube, like, subscribe, all the things, whatever. And I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.